Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Legendarium Podcast. My name is Craig, and I'm here with a solo episode. Just me today. I've done a few of these uh, in the recent past. Uh, I'm going to keep doing them uh, as long as people aren't emailing me to tell me that they absolutely hate them. <laughs> so I, I guess that's up to you if you absolutely hate them. Anyway, today, yes, it's a solo episode, and I'm going to be picking up on a topic that I uh, addressed on YouTube about a month ago. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up to that, and it's the the What Makes Good Pros series. So we're going to get to that in just a moment. Uh, I, so I'm simultaneously recording this for the podcast and for YouTube. Hopefully it, it should work just fine for both. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> reading some extensive passages. So if you want to read that, while, you know, follow along on screen, then you can pop over to YouTube and go check that out. Um, otherwise, you know, I am going to be reading the whole thing, so it's not like you'll miss anything. You'll just have to listen a little bit closer. Anyway, um, I do want to mention before I get started, uh, go to thelegendarium.com. Um, and also, I, I should say, uh, if you're listening to this near the time that I put it out, go there and poke some holes in it. I got some, uh, I got some emails from listeners who are saying, hey, this is broken on the site, that's broken on the site. And I actually really appreciate that because I, I don't look at it that closely all the time. And so if you notice something that's broken, a broken link or a page that goes nowhere, whatever, uh, let me know so I can fix it. I'll also mention patreon.com slash legendarium. I do want to shout that out. Thank you to all the new patrons uh, who have been here in the last month or so. Um, and I, I want to say this month, gosh, the month of July has been pretty bad as far as us putting out content. There's been vacations. We did Jordan Con. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that got in the way. But I will say this is one reason why I'm really glad that we went with the um, the per episode model on Patreon. Basically, to give you a little background on Patreon, we could ask people to uh, you know to put a buck in the tip jar uh, on a monthly basis or on a per episode basis. And I chose per episode in part because of months like this where it's really light. We haven't really put out much stuff. And so if you're a patron, you don't get charged for stuff that didn't happen, right? So I, I like that a lot. So go check out patreon.com slash legendarium. Okay, let's talk about pros. What makes good pros? I did a video on YouTube. If you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. It was about a month ago. And it was kind of exploring just, a, it was a very, very light, a very light textual analysis of a few different authors, a couple paragraphs from each. And I looked at... Um, uh, sentence length and uh, what what was <laughs> the other small thing? Sentence length, um, uh, paragraph length, uh, whatever. Anyway, the big thing I did was Germanic words versus Latinate words. And I thought it was really interesting how that shook out. Which authors used a lot of Germanic words um, and which ones used Latinate words. Uh, so go check out that video if you haven't. Uh, but for today, I wanted to back it up a little bit and get a definition of what is prose. Now, this is something that I've talked about um, in different episodes of the podcast over the years. And so a lot of what I say may be familiar to longtime listeners of the show, uh, but we are going to get into more depth. So even if you are a longtime listener, hopefully there will be a little bit more here for you to sink your teeth into. If you're not a longtime listener, then this will all be new and uh, and fun and exciting and all of the all the adjectives. So let me start with a tweet uh, from our friend Daniel Green. You know him on YouTube, I'm sure. Uh, but he tweeted out, I hate that people conflate easy to read with not as well written. Easy to read can mean very well written. Written Just because something is dense doesn't mean it's brilliant by default. And to which I responded, amen. Yes, absolutely. This is, this is a thing, right? Uh, people think that if something is simple, then that means it's bad. Uh, and, and okay, even that is <laughs> maybe a little too simplistic, but and it's probably often a subconscious thing, right? Yeah, people don't usually walk around saying, well, that was simple, therefore it's bad. But, you know, it kind of gets in your head like, oh, well, this is YA. Or, you know, you read the first Harry Potter book. Well, oh, gosh, you know, it's, a, it's pretty, pretty simple. It's like, yeah, it's simple because it's written for a certain audience or whatever, but it's written very well. Um, anyway, we're going to come back to this idea. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it's bad. Um, uh, and, and yeah, I want to talk about, I, I want, well, like I said, I want to back up, talk about what prose is, get a good working definition of that, and then we'll come back to that concept. So I'm going to break two 
cardinal rules of public speaking on this episode. The first one is going to be, I'm going to consult the dictionary uh, to kind of open up this discussion, right? You're never supposed to go up to the, the podium and say, well, Webster's Dictionary defines prose as, but that's what, exactly what we're going to do. Um, the second thing I'm going to do, like I mentioned earlier, is read an extended excerpt from something. Anyway, so the let's go to the dictionary definition. If you just go on Google and Google the definition for uh, poetic. Okay, so we're right now we're juxtaposing prosaic and poetic because oftentimes that's the best way to define something is in opposition to something else or, you know, at least it helps you get on the path toward a definition of something. So if you go uh, to the Google Dictionary and, you know, I, I can't remember where they pull it from, but I think it's Oxford Dictionaries that they pull it from. So I'd say that's a pretty authoritative source. You pull up the word poetic and it says that the two definitions are relating to or used in poetry. Okay, fine. Uh, written in verse rather than prose. Okay, fine. Here's a third one. Having an imaginative or sensitively emotional style or uh, style of expression. Okay, now we're, that's interesting. Sensitively emotional style of expression or imaginative. But now, check this out. Listen to the, uh, the synonyms that are given for poetic. We've got metrical, poetical, lyrical, expressive, moving, symbolic, flowery. Okay, so keep that in mind. Those are all perfectly serviceable uh, <laughs> uh, synonyms for poetic, I think. But now let's go to the dictionary definition of prosaic. And I hope it'll become clear why I'm opening with the dictionary definitions, because it is kind of interesting. Prosaic, having the style or diction of prose, lacking poetic beauty. Lacking poetic beauty. Okay, so just in our dictionary definition here, we have uh, sort of editorializing, right? Uh, this is uh, an opinion. It lacks poetic beauty if something is prosaic. Um, now, the, the, next, uh, the next definition is commonplace, unromantic. Okay. Uh, again, you're kind of getting a, a tinge of editorializing here on this one. Now, let's look at the synonyms. So you rem remember the synonyms for poetic. Now, here are the synonyms for prosaic. Unimaginative, uninspired, matter of fact, dull, dry, humdrum, usual, common, conventional, ordinary. Uh, but especially those first ones, dull, dry, uninspired, unimaginative. Wow. Uh, okay. So, um, you could argue that this is a dictionary and, and oftentimes they're trying to be more descriptive than prescriptive. And so they're simply listing synonyms that uh, that people tend to use. Right. But even if that's the case and they're not and it's not the dictionary trying to editorialize necessarily, even if it's the case that they're just describing the way that people use the language. This is really, I think, interesting and indicative of how we as a culture view the idea of prose. Um, that prose is, oh, it, that, that, that it's unimaginative, that it's dull, that in order for prose to be good, it must have a poetic flair. You know, you, you have to drift into the, the poetic style if you want to be, what was it, lyrical, flowery, moving, expressive. These are all the, the synonyms for poetic. Anyway, so today my purpose is kind of to, <laughs> this sounds this sounds so, uh, I, I, I don't know, I feel a little bit full of myself when I say, I want to rescue the idea of prose from the prison that it probably resides in in your mind, thanks to the way that we as a culture think about prose and what, what prosaic means. So... Um, yeah, and anyway, prose, it gets a, a bad rap. I think that the bad rap is wildly unfair. I think prose is as valuable as poetry. Um, I would probably argue more valuable, but if so, not by much. I, poetry is great too. So it, it, with everything that I say here, don't misunderstand me. It's not that uh, as I'm trying to rescue prose from its uh, negative connotation, I am not saying that poetry is bad or, you know, that we should all err on the side of uh, of the prosaic uh, at all times or anything like that. I'm just saying it gets a bad rap. Let's see what we can do to fix that. Um, so what I want to do is I, I want to pull up a quote and I've read this a few times. Um, I, I've got it here. If, if you're watching on YouTube, I've got the uh, 
the Oxford Book of English Prose. I've read an excerpt from this a few times on the show. I want to do it again today. And I'll give you a little bit of background on this. So the Oxford Book of English, English Prose, I found this perusing a French library when I was 20 years old. It's a long story. It doesn't matter. But I was looking in the English language section and I just kind of pulled this book off the shelf, opened it to a random page and was absolutely thunderstruck by this paragraph um, that is from an essay called The Cardinal Virtue of Prose. Um, so the essay that this excerpt is from is by Arthur Clutton Brock. Okay, now the interesting thing about this is in this book, the Oxford Book of English Prose, um, the editor, another Sir Arthur, it was, um, it's uh, Sir Arthur Quiller Cooch, who would have fared extremely poorly in my junior high. Um, but he edited this and pulled together a bunch of different prose samples, you know, everything from Emily Bronte to um, what Edward Fitzgerald and, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of other authors in here who he thought was, were good examples of good prose in English. But sandwiched in the middle of all this is this uh, excerpt by Arthur Clutton Brock uh, from an essay called The Cardinal Virtue of Prose. And he says, and, and forgive me, I'm going to read a very long excerpt here. So hang with me. Um, I promise this will be worth it, but it is a long uh, excerpt. So he says, Prose, of its very nature, is longer than verse, and the virtues peculiar to it manifest themselves gradually. If the cardinal virtue of poetry is love, the cardinal virtue of prose is justice, and whereas love makes you act and speak on the spur of the moment, justice needs inquiry, patience, and a control even of the noblest passions. By justice here, I do not mean justice only to particular people or ideas, but a habit of justice in all the processes of thought a style tranquilized and a form molded by that habit. The master of prose is not cold, but he will not let any word or image inflame him with a heat irrelevant to his purpose. Unhasting, unresting, he pursues it, subduing all the riches of his mind to it, rejecting all beauties that are not germane to it, making his own beauty out of the very accomplishment of it, out of the whole work and its proportions, so that you must read to the end before you know that it is beautiful. But he has his reward, for he is trusted and convinces as those who are at the mercy of their own eloquence do not. And he gives a pleasure all the greater for being hardly noticed. In the best prose, whether narrative or argument, we are so led on as we read that we do not stop to applaud the writer, nor do we stop to question him. Anyway, there you go. I love that paragraph, and it's, uh, like I said, I was just flabbergasted when I read it. It kind of had my mind firing on all cylinders. And keep in mind, I was 20 years old. I never got it out of my mind. Um, I was in a library, so I couldn't take the book with me, but I, I read it three or four times, uh, thought about it a bunch, and I never got it out of my head. And so uh, it was still on my mind years later when I was uh, engaged to my future wife. And so she found a copy of the book for me. And, uh, and so I've, 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 have, I've had it ever since really just for that one paragraph <laughs> anyway, but let's, let's talk about the paragraph. Okay. So if you were paying attention, then maybe it was all perfectly clear. If not, let's break it down a little bit. So what he's saying, Arthur Clutton Brock is saying that prose is longer than poetry. This is pretty self-evident, right? One, uh, one great example uh, that I've got that we can talk about in a moment is uh, John Donne's poem, um, No Man is an Island. And so you read No Man is an Island, you're probably familiar with it. I won't read the whole thing here, but it's uh, the poem is 81 words, if I'm remembering right. But he also wrote a prose version. Um, and I, I, if I'm remembering right, the prose version came first. It was, you know, some extended thing he was writing, and then he ended up turning it into the poem. But the prose version is 715 words, and it contains much of the same language as the poem, uh, but it goes more into depth uh, how, what he was thinking, um, how this relates to the society he lived in at the time and, and all that stuff. So 715 words, that's a lot longer than 80, 81, but it goes into a lot more depth explaining this stuff. Um, and so, and that's one of the virtues of prose that uh, Arthur Clutton Brock was talking about. He says, uh, the virtues peculiar to it manifest themselves gradually. 
And later on, he says, you have to read to the end before you know that it's beautiful. Uh, kind of the idea there being, it's not the words themselves when it comes to prose. It's not the words that are beautiful. It's not your sentence structures. It's not, I mean, those things play a part, but it's really what those things are bringing to light. It's the ideas, the stories, the whatever. Um, he, like he says, uh, w whether it's narrative or argument, whatever kind of prose you're writing, it's going to take time for you to see if that prose that you read was beautiful. It's not self-evident right away. Um, then he gets to an another section here right up top where he says, the cardinal virtue of poetry is love. The cardinal virtue of prose is justice. And he kind of goes on to explain that. But what, he, what he's talking about is essentially emotion versus intellect. Okay, so where poetry engages our emotions. It makes us feel things. He's, he's talking about uh, words and images inflaming us uh, with heat and passion. You know, the poetry does that for us. Prose is uh, more of an intellectual exercise. It's supposed to engage your mind. Like I said, it's about the ideas, not the words themselves. Um, it, it's similar if you, if you're involved in the fantasy community and you've uh, watched any of Brandon Sanderson's lectures uh, from his, uh, his BYU classes, he talks about uh, the, the window pane theory, that the reader is someone in a house, they're in a room looking out, and the story, whatever the, the book that you're reading is what's outside, okay, so it's the scene that you can see through the window, and the writer is the person who constructs the window. So in his telling, um, you can make the window, uh, you know, beautiful stained glass, perfect uh, casing and whatnot, or you can go with uh, what his approach, what he tries to do is the clear glass approach where the the uh, window, it, you almost shouldn't know it's there to what, you know, to uh, whatever extent possible, you shouldn't know the window's there. It just, um, it just lets you look through to the story on the other side. So the idea here would be if, if you've ever been reading a book, and I've had this happen a few times, if you've ever been reading a book and the words on the page kind of disappear, you don't really see the words anymore. You're kind of looking through, you're almost watching uh, images on the page because uh, it's coming through so clearly. That is kind of what we're talking about here. Um, so we're, we're engaging uh, sorry, back to the, the justice versus love. I'm just going to use um, intellect versus emotion since I, th I, I think his word choice there was, eh, let's say it's interesting at least. But the idea here being, yeah, let's, let's engage the intellect over the emotions. But what he's not saying, he, he says here, the, uh, the master of prose is not cold but he will not let any word or image inflame him with a heat irrelevant to his purpose. Um, so, it's not that in the pursuit of engaging our intellect, it's not that we completely leave emotion behind. It's just that it takes longer for us to get there, to engage that um, because it's about the story or the, the concepts being presented. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here that, uh, that we want to talk about right now. Yeah, okay. So we talked about the clear window thing. I, I could go on a tangent. It's basically... Um, Okay, no, I will go on a small tangent. Uh, the difference here between prose and poetry is the same difference in our minds between uh, enlightenment values of reason and logic uh, versus, um, uh, versus romantic virtues of love and passion, those sorts of things, um, youth and movement and, and all, all that. Uh, so again, I'm going to go back to what I was saying at the beginning, which is it's not that prose is, um, you know, absolutely better than poetry and we should leave poetry behind. That's not the point. The point is there's a balance somewhere and we got to find our balance. Um, but I, I think as a society, we have uh, given ourselves over more and more to our romantic sides and thought, OK, well, the. Uh, uh, the the reasonable side the intellect whatever that's that's bo that's boring it's cold it's um you know it doesn't make me feel the same way that i feel with poetry um and i guess that's that's 
potentially true. Or if we want to bring this all back into uh, kind of legendarium language, right? If you've heard one of my absolute favorite, all-time favorite episodes we did, I think it's number 181. It's Tolkien's short story, Leaf by Niggle. Uh, and it, it tells the story of uh, Niggle, who is a guy who just wants to paint. He has a painting of a tree. He wants to finish it. Um, and But he, he keeps getting caught up in the details. And he, all he wants to do is... Uh, is is uh, create his art but he has a very annoying neighbor by the name of Parrish and Parrish keeps bugging him about hey you got to take care of your yard you need to clean your house you gotta you, you have responsibilities and things you have to do and um, they uh, Niggle and Parrish both die and uh, they go on to um, purgatory I guess and uh, they're their task is to work together to create uh, a, a paradise, so a, a kind of uh, a, a paradisical way station. And the whole idea of the story is kind of this idea that I'm talking about, that uh, prose and poetry need to be in balance, uh, where Niggle, he's the poetic, the um, he's the, the romantic, he wants to create art, and that's all he wants to do. All that Niggle, or sorry, all that's Niggle, all that Parrish can worry about is... Um, responsibility and taking care of the day-to-day, -day, the mundane tasks, the things that have to get done every day in order to, um, you know, to, to get through life, basically. Um, and their task is to work together and learn how to reconcile that side, or both sides. Uh, so essentially, it's an allegory for Tolkien himself um, and uh, what he went through in his life trying to balance those two things. And I think that's something we all go through. So if we're getting back to the definition, what is prose? Prose, um, and, and this kind of gets us toward what makes good prose. Prose is that clear glass. It's uh, going back to that tweet from Daniel Green where he says, uh, people conflate easy to read with not as well written. But the idea of prose is the easier to read it is, the better. If the simplest way you can explain whatever concept you're talking about, that is the best way to do it uh, from a prose standpoint. Um, so prose isn't about being beautiful for its own sake. It's about uh, making that window pane as clear as possible so that you can see the, the story or the argument on the other side. In reality, of course, prose doesn't work as well without a little bit of poetry in it. Uh, and likewise, if you had poetry that was purely poetic that had no prosaic virtue behind it nothing to explain nothing to think about well that wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be very valuable either and so we we have to find that uh, that parish versus niggle the balance right between the two the uh, romantic versus enlightenment virtues there has to be some balance the question is where is that balance and of course that's going to be different for everybody so like i said in that first video that i made this this idea of what is good prose, of course, it's all subjective. You are going to feel differently than the next person, than, than me, um, about what is good prose. And I think a lot of what it comes down to is where you draw the line, where you want the balance to be between prose and poetry. So now that we have uh, this, uh, what I think is a pretty good definition from uh, Arthur Clutton Brock, about what is prose and what what makes good prose it kind of it gives you that um it's not I, I i is objective framework the right term or it's at least a common language that we could use to describe what we're talking about and so if somebody it, the examples i mean i've talked about sanderson already but the other examples that i gave on the podcast uh, the, the other very common one would be patrick rothfuss um, he does much more of a stained glass style with his window and your version of what the mix should be, prose versus poetry, may be further toward his side of things. And so you think that is very, uh, you know, lovely and valuable and all those things. Um, but yeah, I, I hope this helps us um, to have, <laughs> like I said, a common language, a common definition Think about this and, uh, and, you know, spread it around with people you talk to. Oh, you know, somebody says, oh, this, uh, you know, I, I don't like this writer there or this, uh, yeah, this author. They're not a good writer. The prose is bad. And and sometimes that may be true. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to dismiss out of hand the idea that prose can be bad. It, it can. 
Um, you can be an unskilled uh, prose artisan, right? But it could just be that somebody, when they say that prose is bad, what they mean is I was hoping for something more poetic. Um, and so when you, next time you have a conversation like that, next time you hear somebody say, well, the prose is bad, you can ask them, what do you mean by that? What what is it that you're looking for in prose? Why is it that you think that prose is bad? Is it just that it wasn't poetic enough? Fair enough. Um, and now here's you know eight other authors to recommend that maybe match up more with your style of uh, of reading. So anyway, uh, gosh, I've gone on for quite long enough. I think uh, hopefully this wasn't too painful with just me by myself. I think this is the longest solo one that I've done so far, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway. Uh, like I said, I hope it's valuable. I hope it touches up, it touches off some good conversations. Uh, and uh, yeah, make sure you go to Discord to join in those conversations. Go to Patreon, do all the things. Um, anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching if you're on YouTube. Um, if you're not, then yeah, go on YouTube, subscribe, we'll do more videos. It'll be a great time. Thanks for watching, everybody, and listening. See you later.